G'day fellows and welcome to a video on trade. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to do the trade trick. I've seen a lot of questions about this. We're also going to be talking about not, not just the best civilizations for trade, but why they're the best civs for trade. And we're going to be talking about the maps that you should and you should not be trading on. So let's start with the maps that you should be trading on. Most important maps that you should be trading on. Number one is Altai. Number two, Hill and Dale. Number three, The Pit. These three maps are your primary trade maps. Hideout is also a decent map. Dry Arabia, it's a little bit worse. Lipany, it's not so bad. Avoid trading on Forest Ponds. Avoid trading on Ancient Spires. It is possible to pull trade off on these two maps down here, uh, but probably best just to avoid them. So let's jump into a skirmish game. I'm going to just demonstrate exactly the way uh, that you want to be trading um, and how to do that trade trick. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn our resources on to max and we are going to jump into a game very quickly. And I'm going to demonstrate how the trade trick works and why you want to try and take advantage of it as much as possible uh, whenever you are setting up trade. So we take a look. This is Altai, a typical Altai spawn. I'm going to send some villagers down to my trading post. I'm going to send some villagers up to this top corner for a market. Now, it's not the best market or best trading post that you can get. The best mark or trading post that you can get uh, is directly or right along the edge of the map. But if you see here, uh, you can actually, you can. there's a tile at the back there. So it's it's not the best. This, actually, this one here is, uh, so we could put a market down there and we'd get a higher rate, but it's, it's, a mu it's much of a muchness. Um, so let us put in some cheats so that we can start our age up. Uh, and just for the sake of it, we're just going to put the Twin Minaret Madressa down. Normally, I mean, you, you might want to go for the market or, yeah, for the uh, the, the Sultan Hani landmark. But th that's not the point. The point is, how do we how do we do the trade trick? That's what we're going to be looking at here. That's what the big question is because a lot of people have been asking that. So this is how you do it. This is your standard trade route, okay? You put your market as far away from your trading post as possible, okay? That's the key. You want it as far away as possible because anything less than that, and I'll, I'll be going over uh, rates a little bit later, uh, anything less than that, it's going to reduce the gold that your trader is bringing in. So it's going to look very funny because my, my traders are actually going to be making instantly because I've got the cheats on, so you can see them right there. So these traders right now take three minutes and seven seconds to walk all the way across the map here pick up the gold, and then come all the way back. Three minutes and seven seconds. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut the first trip down in half. And by cutting the first trip down in half, we not only double the gold per minute from that trade, uh, but we also get our gold started earlier. So what, how do you do it? Well, let me show you. Uh, we'll just do it with one market, just, just so it's easier for you to, to see. So I'm going to take my market here. I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard. I'm going to right click this market here. And then while holding shift still, I'm going to once again, right click on this trading post. And what that's going to do, it's going to, after I train a trader, it's going to pop that trader out. It's going to say, hey, I need to set my home market. If we take a look at these traders here, you can see they've got set home market. And they're going to say, oh, I'm going to set my home market to this one. And then they say, okay, and now I need to pick up gold. Where do I pick up gold? Oh, I pick up my gold at my trade post. And that's exactly what they do. So here we spawn our trader and immediately... He picks up the gold, and now he has 176 gold. Meanwhile, these guys have been walk walking the entire way across the map. It's taken these guys more than 90 seconds to get here when they eventually do. And this guy has just cut the queue. So that's why it's so important to have. Now, let's talk a little bit about numbers, because when it comes to civilizations that have got certain bonuses, the Ottomans are a civilization that excels at trade. I'll leave a link in the description to the Reddit post that I made. Now, I didn't cover the Mongols in this Reddit post because I, I'll be honest, I, I really couldn't be bothered. I was like, the Mongols have got so many bonuses for trade, trying to calculate like the efficiencies of traders that are cheaper and produced by stone and doubled up. And then with the YAM network on top of it, I'm like, I, I, I actually don't know what, what it would be. And it's probably going to take me a long time to do it. So I'm not going to, uh, but we'll all tap into that. I'll show you what it is. So you can determine the value of a trader immediately by the gold it's carrying so that means that if the if the trader is carrying seven gold that means it's not an efficient trade and we can we can just tell that just by looking at it whereas if the trader is tra uh, carrying say 80 gold or 90 gold then it starts to build up that efficiency so once again here if we set this is the home market what i might do is i might just do a little bit of one of these uh, so that's going to put the trader there set the home market and now pick up so you can see with seven gold here this is a very inefficient trade i'm just going to make sure i kill this guy otherwise he's going to be very annoying with his sound let's see if i can kite him a little bit Oh, Drongo, I didn't even get the sound. How beautiful was that? So, um, how do we determine 
or, or what what is an efficient trader so a trader uh, so we, we can see right here it's important that you understand what the, the baseline of a villager is so the baseline of a villager is 38.6 gold per minute that means that over, over a 10 minute period it's going to collect 386 gold so if we assume that that is the the, the bottom the the standard uh then you can see that a traveler that is carrying 78 gold will be the same as an unupgraded villager. So that means that if I go and take a, take a market down here a little bit further and I go find 78 gold, wherever that is along here, that's going to be the same efficiency as a villager throughout those three, or throughout that, that minute uh, that it is doing the trade. So it, it, it's important to remember that as that number grows higher, and once you start seeing those larger numbers like we've like we've seen before, so right here, 176, this is where the efficiency starts to increase. And so a trader that's traveling full map with 180 gold, so this one over here is full map because it, it touches the border uh, if it goes all the way down to here, that has an efficiency, or rather a, a gold per minute uh, of 57. 57 gold a minute uh, is, is what that generates. So you can see that it's it's a large difference between that. Uh, and to, to clarify like or, or to try and vi help you visualize the difference between a full length of the map trader and a 78 gold trader which is still pretty good by the way let's see if we can if, if uh, we can do this one here i think this might be a little bit shy of 78 uh 78 might be about around here um so you can see right there it's probably about half map at the moment so that's gonna there you go 36 gold uh so th that's 36 so 78 gold is gonna get you just a normal villager whereas this 176 gold is getting you a fully upgraded villager on gold that's wheelbarrow that's precision the what is it called precision axe precision mining let me double check precision something precision pick specialized pick oh my god uh acid distillation and copulation which are the tier one two and three upgrades and wheelbarrow on top of that as well a uh, little bit of a mistake right here. Let's see if we can change this one from there. So that's 62. You can see on the mini map right now that is a 62 trade route. So that's not even that's not even uh, even 78. Uh, so that's when it comes to efficiencies. But Ottomans are, are for trading efficiencies one of the best sieves in the games, uh, just simply because of the bonuses that they have for traders. Uh, so not only are there traders, um, or not only do the traders have the ability to have trade bags. I'm just going to delete this guy. Uh, let's age up. Uh, and just blast out some units really quickly so that we've got some points to spend there we go okay so trade bags is going to increase our gold from traders by 40 percent so that's going to take this 176 and that's going to put that up to about 240 245 somewhere around that now you can't see it okay because it, it, it is updated though as soon as this guy hands in the gold you will see it let's let's see if we can do that just quickly so it should be 247. And now when this guy hands in the gold, it will be 247 right there. So that's the first way that you're going to be increasing your trade with the Ottomans. But there's more than that. Okay, in addition to that, you can empower it through the Sea Gate Castle, which makes them move faster. Now, you guys would have seen that, okay, because that was that was something that Salamis actually utilized. So what you can do is place down your, your keeps along your trade line. And then that's going to be buffing up that's going to be buffing up your traders even further. They move from one movement speed up to 1.4 movement speed. There we go, right there. Massive speed boost coming in. So you want to put your keeps along along the trade line like this. And then not only is that going to protect them, it's going to make them move faster. And it's also going to give them armor. An extra 10 armor. Which means if horsemen come in, if spearmen come in, look to try and get the raids off, they're going to be doing doing any ba or barely any damage. If, if we... Let, let's get a, uh, a blacksmith in right now and get our armor ups. You can see right there. 13 armor on that bad boy that's a lot of armor that is a huge amount of armor and then by putting up this keep it's going to extend that radius and and remember that this lingers so now not only do you have traders that are carrying more you also have traders that are moving for uh, or rather that are carrying more and moving faster at the same time and it means that the total gold per minute uh that you can get from this is 112 gold a minute if you've got keeps providing this buff to the entire trade route you can see right there that it lingers they come through and then by the time they get back in it's still lingering it will reach a huge amount of gold a minute 112 gold per minute for each individual trader just keeping in mind that a base villager is 38.6 gold a minute so that's pretty much three times a base villager right there 
about two times as much a fully upgraded villager. Obviously, fully upgraded villagers, you, you very rarely see them, and this is something that you can achieve in early Imperial uh, as, as the Ottomans. But obviously, the Ottomans aren't the only civilization that can do this. So in addition to that, Malians have got really good trade. We've talked about that a million times. Uh, they can get 86 gold per minute and 17 food per minute, uh, which is definitely attractive. Uh, the Abbasid have got uh, quite some bonuses as well, as, and of course the French do. Uh, but essentially, trade is good. That's that's the TLDR. Trade is good. Uh, and of course, in addition to that, so we, we talked earlier about the fact that you would be cutting down your um, your the distance of your first trip by doing by doing the the, the market trick, I guess you'd call it. Uh, what you can do is is now this is stacking up all of these bonuses. So now I'm getting the extra forty percent gold. And I'm going to be moving faster once I hit this part, which means that effectively my gold from the first trip isn't 112 GPM, but it's closer to 200 gold per minute, which is absolutely ludicrous when you think about that. That on on the first trip, a, a an Ottoman trader is potentially pulling in as much as five unupgraded villages. It's actually 5.3 unupgraded villages. It's a huge amount. Uh, but that is that is going to be it when it comes to the bonuses uh, for trade. Uh, the the most important thing. To remember when you're trading is wall 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 early and wall often that is the best tip i can give you uh so always try and look to uh to wall you know up, up the front like this but another key thing is you want to make sure that you're walling in sacred sites okay you need to have at least one walled in if you don't have one sacred site walled in your enemy will go for the sacred victory so when it comes to a sacred site like this make sure that you wall that in and whenever you're walling don't wall to the wood lines if you wall to the wood lines you want to see what happens let me show you what happens Let's say that this is walled in. All right. Or, or your beautiful walls have, have just come up. You're, you're living the, the great life. The trade's going through. Everyone's happy. And then what happens? Your enemy says, I'm going to just chop through right here. And they just go, chop. And then they go, chop. And I'm just going to do the sound effects for you because it's, it's not enough. Uh, can we chop that one? We don't need to. We just walk straight through. And that's why we don't do it. That's why we don't go to the wood line. Because just like that, in the blink of an eye, your entire defense has been compromised. So make sure that when you're walling, you wall the rocks to the edge of the map. Now there are exceptions to that. You can you can you can use stone walls for that. I I, I don't have any real problem with stone walls, just because of the way stone walls uh, meet the trees. It can be very difficult to chop through, and you'll probably see it by the time it happens. If someone wants to chop through on this, they're going to need to chop. I'm assuming one, two, three, probably even a fourth tree here. Maybe maybe it's just the three. Let's let's have a look and see. Uh, let's delete this. I'm, look, this is probably probably not necessary, but you know, for the memes, let's find out. This the first one. Can we get through that? No, nope, can't get through that. So here's the second one. I mean, you, you probably shouldn't even do it with stone walls. You're spending that much on on stone walls. Can't do that one either. You can see right there, having having problems. And these, these guys are all just uh, going to start chopping this tree now. And then that should allow us through. So you can see the difference that uh, that it's got with the stone wall. So it's, it's, it's a little bit more hefty. And then that should allow you to get through. There we go. But remember that you can just stop all of that if you just wall directly across like that. So that's what I'm advocating for. That's what I encourage you to do. Other than that, I think that's pretty much it when it comes to trade. Um, yeah. I think that's it. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments and uh, I shall get back to you. But uh, that's been everything you need to know about trade.